Yep, recording now. Okay, great. So I wanna thank everybody for coming to the Finance and Finance Advisory Committee uh, meeting today. We have Councilwoman Berry, Councilwoman Pardee, Councilwoman Blankfeld, Councilman Rock, Councilman Gould. Um, the mayor is also on. Um, and then we have our committee members as well. We have Brad Glazer, Rick Brenner, um, Wynn Weiser, and Steve Wertheim. Um, so I, I think, again, I thank everybody for coming. Um, you have all been emailed a series of um, different documents revenues and expense reports, as well as a projected statement of cash position, some personnel counts and some capital assets. I wanna start off by um, just reviewing the projected statement of cash position um, and then going through my thoughts first on, on the statement and then take um, comments from the committee council. So um, the goal for tonight is to try and have a recommendation to council. We are very far behind our schedule. The way that this typically goes is that in September, we get an initial budget. Um, this committee calls the different directors to present their needs for the next year. We then, um, as a group um, come back together and discuss the needs versus the wants and then make, make a rec recommendation for council by um, that December 15th um, deadline. So the budget can be um, finalized. There is a clause where we can finalize a budget at the end of March in case we need more time. That is the case this year um, just because of COVID and some other issues. Um, okay, so in terms of the cash position, um, it's a one pager if everybody can take a look at it. The bottom line um, of this statement is that we have a $3 million deficit, which is not sustainable um, for the city to work with. One thing that, or actually two things that I want to keep in mind before I um, discuss some other issues is that there's also a $500,000 carryover on here, which I'm putting aside for this discussion. Um, we do also have about $1.2 million in, in cash that is from CARES funding and Bureau of Workers comps rebates and a couple other small funds, which will help this deficit. So at this point, it's really a $1.8 million deficit. Um, I don't believe at this time we can get to zero. I think there's too many needs for the city. Um, however, I don't think that we should, um, I, I think we should be between three and $400,000 in deficit as opposed to as opposed to zero or anything more. I personally don't have an appetite for a half a million dollar deficit. I would be much more comfortable for a three to $400,000 deficit. Um, so again, I just wanna bring out some points um, for discussion and um, how, to, how to lower, how to reduce this budget. And then I wanna open it up for discussion. But that 1.8 million, that doesn't take into account that there's the $500,000 encumbrance right. from 2020. So really it's like 2.3 million. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so after reviewing all of, the, all of this um, information that the finance director gave to us, and I wanna thank him. Um, I think he's still on, he's on my other screen. Um, when I look at all of the different assets that capital assets that need to be purchased and I look at all of the other um, variables on here, this is what I came up with to, to help reduce this budget. Um, instead of 
two fire prevention vehicles. This year I propose only one, which saves us $45,000. I also am looking at, instead of four new police cars, to do two police cars, which saves $120,000. Um, I'd like the mayor to speak when I'm finished on, we have a possibility of selling our cell tower which can bring in potential revenue between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars um we have street um maintenance right now budgeted at 1.3 million dollars since we did not do streets last year there is essentially two in this year it's actually more than two because usually our street is only about three hundred thousand I propose cutting that in half and only doing $650,000 worth. That right there comes to 1.2 million out of that 1.8. So in my estimation, we have about another two to $300,000 of reductions to at least make me personally comfortable. And again, this is a discussion and I wanna hear from everybody, but that's what I came to right now. Um, I'd like to open it up to everybody to, um, you know, hear your thoughts. Uh, and if you can just either, you could start talking or you can raise your hand and- you Well, I, I would actually like to hear from the um, finance director a little more explanation as to in these reports, you, you wrote a summary here, but what has changed? I'm seeing a lot here in salaries that are up from 2020, but with my conversation with the vice mayor, um, some of that is offset because it cares. I, I just would like a better explanation as to your um, your thoughts here on the revenue and on the expense side. What what has changed since last year? Uh, you're on mute. Yeah, Dennis, you're on mute. Okay, all good. Yep, yeah. I hear you. Um, let's start with revenue. Uh, the, the two major changes that uh, Mrs. Weiss already referred to, last year in the general fund, we received about $975,000 of rebates from the Bureau of Workers Comp. This year we have projected in there to only receive about $125,000. That number is still debatable. Workers Comp is working out their formulas for this year. Uh, most of that money that we received last year was in the last quarter of 2020. The other um, point that Mrs. Weiss made, we received about $1.2 million in CARES Act money. We set up a special fund for that that was Fund 297. What we did primarily was to offset Safety Force's salary expense against that new fund with that $1.2 million. There was also about a hundred and I think 80,000 or so of mostly um, PPE expenses, materials and supplies and minor equipment that dealt with the COVID issue. But the big chunk of that money that was written off was for the safety forces salaries. That's for the union wages. So in doing the budget this year, we have to go back to to estimates that are commensurate with 2019 levels, because we're not, at least as of now, we're not, have been advised that we're gonna have any kind of access to additional money, either on the federal or state level. So th those expenses that were lower in terms of um, police and fire for 2020 are now gonna go back up by the amounts that we um, charged off to that other fund. The, the good news on the flip side of that is that if you remember last year, we had an extra payroll for the whole city. So that amounted to about $350,000 that we will not have to accommodate this year. The only other areas where there was major fluctuations in salaries were in building and housing because of the turnover and some of the issues we've had in those two departments in 2020. Um, we would expect to get those up to levels that are similar, um, maybe not equal, because I know the mayor has some thoughts about 
consolidating some things, but I wanted to put provision in there to get back to the quantity of positions that were funded um, in 2019. So from a revenue standpoint, the two big things um, were the CARES money and the Bureau of Workers' Comp rebates. And then in terms of salary increases that were associated with this budget, um, it would only, the primary ones were police and fire. Those were very substantial. It's about $900,000. And then the extra money in building and housing to accommodate getting those staffing levels back up to par. Other than that, everything pretty much matches against the 2019 levels. That was when there was only 26 pays also. Um, There's some small changes due to the increase in healthcare um, that the city is going to pay that additional bump, at least for now in 2021. But in terms of salary and benefits, those are the primary areas that have significant variances from last year. I don't know if that, does that help any, John? That does, I'm glad you mentioned that that 297, because so you're offsetting that in the expense 297 as well, right? So what I'm right. saying, yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense to me because I wasn't understanding why the, the big fluctuation, because it looked like, it, on paper, it looked like police and fire went up substantially. But what I see here in 297 expense, you have a police expense of 358,000 and a fire of 744,000. So that's all CARES related expenses. Right. Okay, okay. So in 2021, what are you doing here with 2021? You're not assuming any CARES expense because you're not assuming any CARES revenue, right? Right, we have expended all the monies. You know, initially the deadline was 1231. It got extended, but that was subsequent to us already using all the money. Okay. So any of those expenses that got credited to Fund 297 in 2020 are now going to transfer for this year to be charged off to the general fund. But would you still code it under 297 in case something passes later in the year? No, because we don't have any fund balance left for us to appropriate against. So if something were to pass later in the year, can you go back and, and, and yeah. redo that coding then? Okay, okay. Yeah. Dennis, since we're talking about the the salaries um, on the personnel list that you provide, you provided, it says housing one administrative assistant. Is that new? No, that's a, that's a vacancy that um, existed. Um, it's not filled right now, to the best of my knowledge. Maybe the mayor can. Yeah, that is correct. We, we used to have a uh, three administrative assistants in building and housing, and uh, one uh, left, uh, one has been vacant for, I think, over a year now. But the position still technically exists and should be nevertheless accounted for and probably ought to be filled. How much is that? Because it's not broken up by dollars. How much is that? vacancy do you know offhand that is about it's a little bit under sixty thousand dollars when you count medical benefits pension contribution and salary i, I believe the salary is about nineteen dollars an hour so it's it equates to about forty thousand just in compensation itself any other questions yeah, Dennis, I really want you to go through this expense report um, department by department and explain some of the variances between 2021 and 2020. I'm looking through real quick here. So um, on police and fire, it seems to make sense because the, the variance was the COVID numbers. So I'm okay with that. Um, traffic control looks like there was a variance of about 50,000, what, what's going on in traffic control? It looks like material supplies and minor expense and contracted services went up. Yes, yeah, some, <clears throat> some of the things that um, the police department pointed out, 
such as one that just came to council, I believe the last meeting, some of these controllers need to be replaced. Um, council just approved a $20,000 expense for a replacement. It'll get charged to traffic control. So we were trying to get the numbers in more in line with what 2019 and 2020 original budget were. Um, think a lot of things were done last year because of COVID. But if you look um, at the 2019 budget, the department budget was 363,000. Uh, the budget in 2020 was 245,000. So this number that's proposed for this year is less than either of those other budget years. Okay, go back to building and housing, please. Yeah. This is where we really need an explanation of what the department structure is gonna look like. This has gone all over the place. There were one department, then went to two departments and we're gonna do one. I, I don't know what the structure is gonna look like now, but the, in terms of the budget here, you have housing, I'm sorry, building going up hundred and ten thousand dollars and you have housing going up by about forty some thousand dollars so is that all personnel because we've had some vacancies in 2020 can you explain the structure a little more yeah i'll i'll um give you the numbers john i'll let the mayor um discuss his strategy in terms of the future there but you know we went pretty much the majority of the year without a building commissioner um, that salary that came on board late in 2020 is $85,000. So adding that in plus pension contributions uh, brings you close to um, the, the mid to upper 90s. So that accommodates for the majority of that increase in the building department. Um, there's also, there's been vacancies on an inspector level position that wasn't filled, that was contracted out on a part-time basis. So assuming that position gets filled in building, that is also going to add to the total salary cost for this year compared to um, what we actually spent in 2020. In 2019, we spent $293,000 for the building department. So this, um, in, in terms of salaries and wages, and this year we're proposing 266. In terms of total expenses, this budget of 421 for building only is under what the budget actually was set at for 2019, which is 433,000. In terms of uh, housing, we have similar issues there. I think if you remember, there was a building commissioner and there was also a housing director that uh, a portion of that person's salary was charged off to the housing department. That did not occur for the majority of 2020. So again, we're, we're kind of using 2019 as a more accurate metric. And our proposal for this year was 193,000 for housing, which is about 30,000 under the 2019 actual and about 50,000 under the 2019 original budget. Um, so those basically account for those, the differences in those two, to, two departments. If the structure of those departments change substantially and we can realize some savings or those positions are not filled, that would be something. If you remember last year, we did adjust um, both building and housing in terms of appropriation at that mid-year correction um, appropriation ordinance we passed. So we would have that option of doing that again this year, but I'll let the mayor speak as to um, what his plans are for the. Yes. Well, as, as everyone's aware, you know, um, we were late to the budget process this year due to absences due to COVID. And um, one of the decisions that we made in order to streamline this process was to budget for building and housing in a way that was substantially similar to what we've been doing historically, even though we are looking at making uh, changes in the department and adjustments can then follow from that when those changes are implemented. Um, we have discussed how in the strategic planning committee, how this would be something that would be folded into that process 
and that uh, and, and you know that that subcommittee is is actually meeting a week from today. Uh, that said, that said, um, what, what I can tell you from doing the different things on the ad hoc basis during the pandemic is that there are several things that we did, you know, explore and try out, and the uh, most likely proposed model would be a singular department that has a chief building official person we now have who uh, Nino Monaco who uh, is working on a salaried part-time basis as an employee and not as a uh, contractor uh, that we would have a full-time administrator of the department whatever we call that department and that that person would also double substantially as the housing director as well. That uh, the functions of planning would also go into that department that we would need uh, two, but probably three administrative assistants. We probably need at least one more building inspector. We have had a building inspector position posted and have advertised for it since October of last year. Uh, we have not had uh, applicants that were, we have not had any applicants that we felt were appropriate to move forward on with respect to uh, that position. Those positions are, are hard to fill and during the pandemic, a lot of people basically stayed in place. Uh, with uh, respect to the administrative assistance, uh, we are going through a process, a uh, turnover process. The, uh, uh, we, we had two people that haven't quite worked out the way we thought or hoped they would. That sometimes happens. Uh, we, are, we do have interviews set up to uh, bring in at least two additional people. And um, you know, substantially what the department would look like would be an administrative head who also handles the, the, the housing. Uh, we have our chief building official who isn't necessarily the administrative head of the department because they're here to do those things that only a chief building official can do. Historically, we've seen in, in other cities as well as our own that there are specialized tasks that, that you need your CBO to do. There are lots of different people who can administer a department. So uh, leave the specialized tasks to the CBO. Don't, don't ask them to do something that isn't naturally in their wheelhouse and uh, have a skilled administrator that's running the department uh, working in close con concert with that CBO. Um, so we would have our, our administrative director, our CBO, the administrative assistants, the city planner, uh, and our, you know, at least one more building inspector and then the three housing inspectors we already have. Okay, so back up. So let me just make sure I have this. Can I ask one question quick, John? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so we are paying a part-time building director a hundred thousand dollars. I thought he knew part-time. I think it's eighty-five we're paying him, and part -time. he is part-time. That's what the market bears. For full-time, probably. No, for part-time. He's buy? working part-time also elsewhere and being paid more elsewhere than we're paying him. Okay, John, you can go ahead. I'll ask my question. Okay, I just want to make sure my numbers make jive with yours. You have a chief building official mm -hmm. who is someone that we were used to being called the building commissioner, correct? Right. Okay. But we're right. calling the CBO instead because in our minds, a building commissioner also runs the department. We're not asking him to run the department. So what's the salary of a CBO then? Uh, we're paying Nino you know, about eighty-five thousand dollars a year to part time. Plus part time. I don't think he's getting benefits here. Dennis mentioned he's getting benefits. Uh, getting benefits? The city has a um, employer contribution for OPERS that would be fourteen oh. percent. Okay. So that's why I said it bring you to the mid nineties. There, he's not eligible for medical insurance, so that doesn't come in. But you know, mm -hmm. there's Medicare tax, a couple other nominal. Fringes, but it's probably total cost of the city's mid to upper 90s. Okay. Okay, so you have, so he's not even running the department, but he's making 85,000 a year mm -hmm. part time. And then we have a full time administrative head of the department who's going to be heading the housing function. And what's that salary? I don't know if we've determined that at this point. I mean, again, we have 
put forward a budget that reflects more closely what we've done historically as opposed to where we're going. That, that position, John, is in here for roughly 60,000. Okay. Plus benefits? Plus benefits, yes. Okay, and then you have three administrative assistants. You're gonna have a city planner and you're gonna have four inspectors. Does that match your numbers? Sounds about right. Okay, so historically, we, I don't remember us having a city planner, this is new. And I'm not sure how many city uh, inspectors we've had. Can you go back and let us know? We've, we've had up to five. Uh, we've had two building in addition to the three housing. So you had two building, three housing. Right now you're asking for one building, three housing. Correct. Okay. And then how many administrative assistants have we had? I only remember two. We've had three. We had Ruth D and Teddy. And Teddy. Okay. But what about a city planner? Uh, city planner is a newer position. Um, that that's the position that Brendan Zach was in before we promoted him temporarily to interim manager of building, uh, housing, and community development. Okay, so this is a new position for 2021. No, this is we we've had him since 19. So the so the director is the new is going to be the new position then. Yes, I mean it would probably supplant the the uh, housing and community development director. Okay. So like what Patrick was doing. Correct. Basically, it's a Patrick type that I would expect having running this department, if that helps. Probably with somebody with a master's uh, in planning or something related. Okay. Okay, I mean, just in regards to this department, again, we are we still need to reduce this budget to, to not ha have an outrageous deficit. I mean, again, this is not sustainable the, the way that we are proceeding oh. with this planning here. Yeah, and you know, we didn't, you didn't afford me an opportunity to talk about any of this, you know, at the beginning. You know, we've presented a budget here and the budget represents the administration's priorities. You know, you framed it in terms of deficit when you know we have been collecting money in excess of what we spend uh, for numerous years, especially when we talk about you know special revenue funds, which is something that I want Dennis to talk about this evening because it's very important and it's critical to how we approach this particular budget for for legal reasons, as and, and as well as for uh, you know financial reasons and, and reasons with regard to the operation of the city. I mean, what I would like people to look at is the fact that we went into we went into 2020 with a carryover balance of just under $4 million. We went into this year- Is that general fund or is that all funds? All funds. No, no, that's general fund. General fund? Okay, excuse me, general fund. You know, this year we're going in uh, to 2021 with a carryover balance of 5.1 million. Somehow- So there's so many transfers between general fund and the other funds. I wanna hear total funds. What was the beginning balance of total funds in 1920 and 21? Dennis, do you have that? The beginning balance in 21 this year is a little over $9 million. Okay. Um, last year, it was just a little bit south of $8 million. So it was all fund basis. Um, and that's based on the it's about a million dollars that we, that's the reason why we're higher. And then 19, what about 2019 beginning balance of total funds? Twenty nineteen. I'd have to look that up, John. I don't. Okay. It's sitting right here. I think I. S Mayor, did you want to continue with what you were oh, saying? Oh yes, yes, yes. I mean, the thing is, is, is that this budget, this budget restores the projects that we cut in twenty twenty. You know, back in June. Of, of last year, we cut over a million dollars out of the budget, you know, out, out of abundance of caution. You know, we didn't know where we were going to be. We didn't know what the what the financial picture was going to look like. We didn't know how long we would be quarantined or when, if ever, there would be a vaccine. We didn't know what the economic fallout would be. So, you know, th there were a million dollars worth of things that we cut, and a little over a million. But 
but and some of those things are things that we're never going to get back that we will never open the pool in 2020 as it turns out so with that money it will never be spent but things like roads have to be done and and you know i know that we've shared with you the list of roads from joe chuni you know in addition to the roads that we didn't pave last year uh, there are roads that are due up to be paved this year. And if we did all of them, we're talking about another at least $800,000 in roads. Now, I'm not proposing we do all of them, though we could, because we do have the money to do it if we really wanted to. But, you know, it does make sense that we would, uh, you know, pick some of them and, and, and do some of them. Um, with that, then also, uh, you know, we've got uh, you know, we've got these special revenue funds that have far too much money accumulating in them. Dennis is going to talk more about this, but the thing is, is we run a risk of having a taxpayer tell us or having the county tell us administratively that we can't continue to collect special assessments at the rates we do if we're not going to spend the money that we collect in those funds. And the thing is, is we have plenty of projects and expenses that we ought to be um, that we ought to be spending the money on, investing in the community in. And, you know, we should be trying to avoid that risk. You know, we had a gentleman show up at our last council meeting. He's talking about how heavily taxed we are. You know, he wanted some answers. You know, we didn't give him much. But the thing is, is if we really wanted to talk or, 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 or have this conversation with him, the fact is, is that we've got a lot of money in those funds and we really ought to be spending them down to avoid a taxpayer lawsuit or to avoid the county telling us that we're not allowed to pass, uh, we're not allowed to have special assessments next year. Well, wait a second. So most of our assessments accounts break even. I mean, one of them actually we're spending more than we're bringing in. One. One of them, yes. One. And then the other one. three were close to breaking even. I mean, we were allowed to have a, a, a fun balance. Yeah, Dennis. I never heard we weren't allowed to have a fun yeah, balance. You can have a balance, but you know, Dennis, why don't you elaborate on this? Okay, just to address John's other question, the all funds balance at the beginning of 19 was $8.7 million. Okay. 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 Um, okay, as far as special assessment funds, we have um, three special revenue funds that get special assessments and one capital fund. Um, for all intents and purposes, we can dispose of the street lighting fund because we actually, the assessment in that fund is not substantial enough to pay the bills for the entire year. The annual bills um, projected for this year are about 220,000. Our projected revenue coming in is going to be 187,000 based on um, the assessments that were passed last September. So that's gonna require a subsidy from the general fund of $34,000 to satisfy all the bills. I think the mayor's talking about the other two special revenue funds and the sewer capital fund. Uh, the sewer and water maintenance fund has a beginning balance of $1.13 million. We're uh, projecting to bring in on the special assessments and a couple other nominal revenue sources, 705,000. So the total available would be about 1.8 million. Um, we're proposing to, to um, spend a little over a million, 1,043,000 to leave a balance of 807,000. Um, to, to the mayor and I had several discussions. He said, you know, if we don't consider the beginning balance as part of our expenditure program, we're limited to spending only what we project to take in, in revenue in 2021, which would be 705,000 we would still end up with a fund balance in excess of a million dollars. What, what we have to be careful of is that somebody, a business, a person, whatever, could make the case that we're not, we don't have plans for that million dollars. We've not exhibited any spending patterns and therefore they could ask the county not to honor the special assessment um, given the fact that it doesn't appear to be necessary for a particular year. That's why when the mayor had indicated his priorities to me in some of these areas, um, I use some of those beginning balances as opposed to restricting our spending only to the amount of revenue that we're coming in for 2021. Sewer and capital 
fund starts the year with 450,000 and it's going to end the year really almost in the same um, area of 446,000. We're gonna use a small margin of money that was in that beginning of balance to cover some of the expenses in that fund. Shade Tree Fund, um, we have 550,000, 165,000 coming in. We're proposing to make a couple of capital acquisitions out of that fund so that the total will um, bring that balance down to 242 at the end of the year as opposed to 550. So um, in order to accommodate um, what the mayor had indicated he wanted to do for the city to get the proper level of equipment and service, um, we had to tap into some of those beginning balances and hopefully those will be replenished over the next couple of years with um, additional assessments as approved by council. Okay, so I wanna thank you for that. Um, now, I, we can have a fund balance in all of these accounts. So to say yeah. that if there's $500,000 in the account and that we don't have a plan for, we absolutely do have a plan for all of these things. For instance, the sewer, the mayor has been very clear about the sewer replacement for the city of, you know, across the entire city is going to be like a billion dollars or whatever it was. it was it was a substantial amount of money so to say that we have a fund balance we we will have a plan um we have a a, a fund that pays more than brings in that's a street lighting can't we change the linear rate we have a, a rate per linear foot of frontage for street lighting and for shade tree. We can actually adjust the rate in one and adjust the other the other way so it's a net even for each individual household so that no fund should be pouring out more money than it's bringing in, in my belief. So I think council has that ability to change that rate without charging more to each household because we would just offset it by one of the other units. Um, I'm of the belief, and maybe some of my other council members are too, we shouldn't be spending more in each fund that we're bringing in, but I see you have a couple of capital projects here. And the shade tree, for instance, was pretty high. I noticed you had the dump truck in the shade tree fund. Um, I mean, perhaps maybe if we're spending so much money on, a, on, the, on the capital that we forego the, the pruning that year so that we can net even in that shade tree fund. And that would cut, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars right there. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how we net even in all of our different funds. That This is where I'm going with that. Well, and what I'm trying to say is that we shouldn't be trying to net even in all these funds, that there are funds like the Shade Tree Fund where we should be trying to spend that down, that we are carrying more money in there that we should, and we have things that we ought to be doing. We, we, we shouldn't dial back on the pruning. The pruning ought to be done. Well, then give us an example of where we can reduce the budget more because we were presented mm -hmm. with a unconscionable deficit with no plan except for this committee and this council to revise it. And it's well, again, it's, I disagree. You know, what are we saving the money for if we're not going to invest it back in the community to the taxpayers who are paying it? We what can do you do with the money if you don't spend it. I'm not sure. I thought we, we needed have, a city hall. I don't know how we're going to so save many, that if we don't save There are so many projects that our city just simply cannot do because mm -hmm. we are not sustainable. We need to get to a point where we can sustain our revenues and our expenses. And we can't right now. And for us to, you know, I, I can speak just for me and John. We have poured over this the last two days together. I mean, this is... I mean, I don't know. You just, everybody's, every director said, oh, I want this and you put it in? Like, did you say no, no to anybody? I don't understand this because no, every please. single one of their requests are in here. No, the police department actually would like six police cars. We only put in four. You know, as an example, you know, we need five garbage trucks over the next five years and we're behind on the service replacement schedule for garbage trucks. I mean, the thing is, is if we were catching up, we'd be buying, I think, two this year. We've only put in for one plus two Kubotas. So, you know, there are things that we didn't, you know, put in. And a lot of these things are, you know, one-time expenses. You know, we can make plans for things that we want to do in the future, or we can follow the plans we have, such as replacement schedules. 
you know, we are one garbage truck away from not being able to pick up trash the way we normally do because we don't have don't the money anymore. for all of these things, Mayor. I realize with the garbage truck, and I'm not even suggesting that we don't have that garbage truck in there, but we don't have the funds for all of these requests. But and we do have, have put, and you have not put in the work to be able to try yeah. and get this deficit down. Well, that that's that, that is false. The thing is, is framing it in terms of the deficit is is improper framing. We have the money. Our, our carryover balance, if we follow this budget, is substantially where we you were. When we the in, you Are you? Can you, can you dip into the four million dollars every single year. In in three years, it's gone. Then what are you going to do? You're going to be like East Cleveland that has no money. No, our carryover balance will be approximately what it was at the beginning of 19 if we follow this budget. As it is, we all agree to a reserve policy in this city of 15% of last year's general fund money. That would be 14.3 million. So by city policy that we all voted on and agreed, our, our reserve policy is to reserve 2.145 million. We have an additional 1.7 million on top of that in this budget. Um. Councilwoman Hardy, you had a question. Thank you. I I just had a question for Dennis. Um, what I what I was hearing was the special fund sewer um, fund may have excess dollar amounts in it. Now I recall when we were looking at the budget and reduced it before, due to the COVID circumstances, we were talking about putting personnel in some of those funds because it was allowable and it was of use. And I was just wondering if that sewer maintenance or if that fund, and I was trying to look up to see what the parameters are for it, but wasn't able to, <clears throat> could accommodate purchasing the, the um, that leaf vacuum or some of the other things that have to do with keeping streets clean, which have direct impact on sewer maintenance and upkeep. And whether that would be a way to at least take some of the burden off and use those funds. I was just curious. Um, yeah, uh, Councilwoman Pardee, the we do have money in the shade tree fund for that leaf vac in addition to the dump truck. So those two items, those are capital items that could be charged to your capital budget, but we're going to use the revenue from uh, the assessment fund to pay for those since they're directly related to the work that's authorized via that assessment. So I guess the question is, is there something for all of these funds that we could be creative about and be handling through some of the special funds, especially where the assessments are high and we're taking in enough? Well, I would, um, not to speak for the mayor, but I'd say we'd that the budget was geared towards acquiring all the services, materials, and equipment that the mayor had outlined as part of his agenda for 2021. So um, we did use the special assessment funds to acquire some of the resources. The sewer capital uh, fund has about $30,000 in it to acquire a uh, pickup truck that the service department is. Um, presented the need for. So we have offset some of the normal capital fund requests that have to be supplemented by general fund transfers um, to these other funds. So the expenses absorb as part of the either the fund balance or the assessment collections for the current year. I hope that helps since. It does. I appreciate that. I'm just wondering where we're talking about maybe having additional assessments and not spending them down and maybe a business coming forward or someone who's wrangled coming forward why we're not looking at more ways to extend those funds. Well, I would be open to a discussion on that. If, if there were additional projects that, that you know, are appropriate to those funds that, that we could be doing this year, um, then I'd uh, be happy to explore that further. Well, thank you, Mayor, but I'm not talking about adding because I happen to agree with the Vice Mayor. <laughs> I, I'm looking at ways to accomplish what you want to accomplish 
because I believe we should balance and I have for years, I don't love deficit spending period. I understand wanting to invest in the city, but I have said repeatedly, we don't have to do everything all at once. We can absolutely phase things in and consider that. So I am looking at ways we can accomplish what you're interested in accomplishing through your budget, but reducing some of those costs to the general fund, for example, or for some of the other projects. But thank you, just an idea. Thank you. Mayor Vice Honey. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, I, I wanted to kind of drill down a bit on the issues that you were talking uh, and follow up to Councilman Rock on. You shared that there were these taxpayer actions, either by an individual or a business that can be brought uh, due to excess in uh, these types of accounts. When last did you uh, see a community challenge successfully with such an action? Um, I, off the top of my head, uh, Mr. Gould, I'd probably say that there was something two or three years ago. Um, it's part of, um, to understand what the County Budget Commission does, um, cities have to file when, uh, when you file your tax budget in the summer, when we prepare that document, that projects next year's budget and also um, estimates what the property tax assessments would be in terms of millage, not special assessments. That is then filed with the County Budget Commission. The County Budget Commission has the responsibility to look at the spending plans of each political subdivision, that's municipal, village, school district, to make sure that that, that political subdivision is documenting and justifying the amount of tax that they're requesting the county to levy on property values to support their projected expenses. That's really the purpose of the County Budget Commission. Not a lot of people know that, but you have to file um, that tax budget with them every July. We get back then the certified rates if they agree with what was proposed. That comes back to council in September to be voted on and approved to establish the tax rates for the following year. So, um, sure. I guess I'm just trying. I appreciate that that explanation of the process. I guess I'm just trying to better understand the likelihood of the threat. Um, under what circumstances was the previous denial that you're warning us about? I mean, they're, they're, the case that I was aware of, there was a municipality where special assessments were not levied. Um, and then there, because of an error on the city's part, and the city came back to the county and requested that those assessments, which had not been imposed for a number of years, then be reinstituted and applied. And the county did not agree with that request. And uh, the city board- So you've highlighted- You've highlighted an instance where a, a city was declined the ability to impose retroactively special assessments, which it hadn't uh, done appropriately through the proper channels. That's very different to what we're talking about, is it not? Look, it, I'm, I'm not going to argue the legal aspects of it with you. But I'm just stating that, you know, we have to be cognizant of building up balances and continue to assess people without spending down those balances at some point. That point could be this year, that point could be two years from now. Um, I, I am just telling you what the possible risk, I can't put a probability factor on that. Decision turned on the fact that the, that the municipality in question had funding well in excess of what it already needed even without putting those assessments back on. The rationale comes back to having an amount of money in your balances that that you you aren't using and is already more than sufficient and also doesn't appear to have any particular purpose. You know, we're all being coy as to what municipality it is. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to say it right here on the public record, even though it is a matter of public record, because I'm not trying to pick on that municipality, but it is here in Cuyahoga County and we've all heard of it. I guess, Mayor, what I, you know, the, 
reason I ask is because I, I get very, we, we, we both understand and you, you've spread upon the record quite clearly the issues that we have with our sewer system, for instance, as, as Councilman Rock highlighted, that we will not be able to come up with special assessments with the billion dollars that it's going to take to replace our sewers. So therefore, as a municipality, we are stuck in a position where as the years progress and more emergent issues come up with our sewers, we're going to need to have money on hand to address those those issues. And so I'm very concerned to hear that there is a theory that our ability to maintain funds necessary to address potential emergent needs in future uh, may be compromised by this taxpayer or, or entity lawsuit. And so I, I, I guess, or challenge. And so I guess if not, I, I certainly don't want to ask the, you know, uh, finance director to argue the finer legal points, but if this is actually something that this council should take into consideration in spending down uh, these, these accounts, I'd really would like to have an analysis by the law director of when this has occurred, what were the percentages in which it was it occurred, uh, and and then be able to make a, a comparison to our funds and our plans in future, or else I really don't want to base this as a reason without actual justification and, and concrete examples with 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 you know sound legal analysis for spending down funds which we all recognize are going to be necessary to secure the city in future. I agree. Um, I'd really like to see what the law director had to say about it. And we've got an infrastructure that is extraordinarily old, like a lot of the communities around here, and it's only going to become uh, more challenged. And we know we have lots of residents that have lots of problems with flooding. Um, there's going to be a lot of work to be done. And, and I, I, I'd like to see what the law director has to say about it, because we can't pull money out of thin air when we have a major sewer issue go bad or on a it, it's something we we have to be able to plan for and to have to have prudently saved for yeah i mean joe chuni has asked for four hundred thousand dollars says well, let me rephrase that it says there's about four hundred thousand dollars of sewer repairs that we ought to do this year and we have it budgeted at three hundred thousand uh, because uh, as a practical matter, we believe that's what we would get done this year. Mm -hmm. But there is about 400,000 that really technically ought to be done. So, um, but when it comes to the sewer fund, you know, the, the, the kind of, of, of near billion dollar project that needs to be done isn't going to be done all at once. And the things that we are talking about doing, uh, you, you know, with the sewer capital fund are, are, are things that are consistent with work that needs to be done with the sewers anyway. So, you know, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to be able to tax everybody up to the 700 to 800 million dollars that we're talking about in order to do the repairs and then and only then after we've reached that money get started. So the thing is, is we should be using these funds and we should be using them aggressively and spending this money because at some point we are going to need to 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 raise more revenue or acquire it from somewhere in order to to fund the kind of project we need to update the infrastructure. You know, okay. you know, I'm hopeful that we will get that money from a federal source, at least in substantial part, but it, nowhere has that been done where there wasn't some kind of local match. Okay, so with, thank you. So without getting into the weeds with this, um, you know, just for the record, we have plans for all of these funds. We will speak to the law director. Um, are there any other comments from, from the committee or council members? Yes, Michelle, I just want to make sure I understand precisely where we're at. We're starting 2021 fiscal year with a positive balance in the bank. We cash, have a budget. But cash is, different, cash is different than revenue. Yes. So we have a, with, with what's presented right now, there, there will be iterations by the end of this meeting. We have, yes, a positive, thank goodness, <laughs> Um, Before we bank, start the budget, we start the year with a positive balance, correct? Yes, yes. and we and looking at, go ahead and looking, right, and looking at what's planned for 2021. On if we don't change a thing, we are spending more than the revenue that would come in 
-hmm. but but am i correct in saying that the excess in spending in 2021 because of the positive balance we start the year with at the 12 31 21 we would still be in the black so to speak we would have a positive cash balance is that correct our cash is 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 not going to go in in the red because we have money in our investments but mm -hmm. historically we don't touch that right. um these are reserves that we have had for many many years what what you see with the projected statement of cash position is that there are three million dollars more in expenses than in revenue that's been presented that's besides an additional five hundred thousand dollars in expenses that were carried over from 2020. right i, I but and uh, we have so many documents in front of us as of 12 31 yes or no if the budget as presented tonight would we be still in a positive cash position yes okay that's what i thought as i interpret this well, we and I also the municipality. What's that? We have to be as a municipality. Only the federal government can be in the red right. with the cash balance. I know. But we we, I know. But the answer, the answer was yes. We would be in a positive cash position. I'm not trying to put us into the red, but I'm just saying some of these expenses. It sounds like to me are one-time expenses. Is that correct? Also, that's correct. Well, okay. it's not necessarily that they're one-time expenses. There are huge capital needs in the city that are not being met because mm -hmm. we do not have the means to pay for them right now. Well, the answer is yes, because when you buy a police car, you don't have to buy it a second time next year. You already have it. Yes. I just wanted to establish that to make sure we're all on the same page. So we start positive, we spend more than we bring in, but we still end the year positive, just not as big a positive number as we start with. But we do end the year in a positive position. Yeah, right. It's pretty close to the number we started with two years ago. We have a million point one more th at this point this year than we did last year. So we spend that and a little bit more. But 500 of that is really Right. right, 500 was encumbered. Mm -hmm. And if we keep spending on this trajectory, there will be no b positive balance in three years. Yeah. But this is, this is yeah, Steve. But no uh, guarantee. Can I, can I, Steve, this, you had a question? What I was to say is no, you spend this you, year, you gotta, we do this one year doesn't mean we have to do it year two and year three, right? Year two and year three going out have huge capital asset requests also. We have a schedule but, that we're, we're making, we're, we're doing a long-term study right now also. But, but Vice Mayor Weiss, um, there are two things that I agree with the, the last person who spoke. If we buy, it's one thing if it's a personnel cost, that personnel costs get projected on into the future plus, you know, whatever cost of living and increases in healthcare. But if this year we buy three police cars and next year we can't afford it, we won't buy three police cars. Um, the other issue is even with personnel, if, if we find ourselves in that kind of tight position as we have normal attrition in a place like uh, the city, we may make the decision not to, I mean, or you may make the decision, you and the council and mayor may make the decision not to replace personnel at that time. So I, I understand where you're going on that, but the, you know, there are also decisions and I, as I understand that there are decisions that are being made about reorganization, which have been alluded to in the in the last couple of meetings and decisions or you know major decisions around garbage collection and the like um, that I assume will affect the budget as well and those are just an example that it's I'm not believe me I I'm you know I'm, I'm a left-wing pinko but when it comes to budgets I'm, I'm where you're at you know I don't like to spend what I don't don't take in either but mm -hmm. We also don't know, I, I think we're going to see, if it were my gut, we're going to see dollars coming down from the feds again. But we don't um, know that for sure. We don't know that. Of course we don't. Sorry, it fell down. 
course we don't know it. Mm -hmm. I am just saying to you is there are a lot of expenditures in this budget that could be cut off next year if the dollars aren't there. Um, it strikes me as a pretty fiscally conservative budget that just from my point of view. I mean, I, I also read over it. Okay. Thank you, so Stephen. A lot, of re a lot of reading this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. Well, I would just say a lot of the things that we see in this budget are capital that we argued last year when we went into full debate about how many police cars we need, how many fire prevention vehicles we need. And it's the exact same request this year that we saw last year. We already debated it. Well, the, the difference last year was we talked about borrowing money, and we're not talking about borrowing money this year. We have. But I'm saying, in terms of capital needs, we you requested two fire prevention vehicles, four police cars. I've seen it again on this budget, and we discussed in this committee over a couple of different meetings that mm -hmm. why do we need two uh, fire prevention vehicles? Yeah. Why do we need four police cars? Well, we actually need six police cars, but we only asked for four. Some of those were for the detectives, I thought. Well, detectives still need police cars. But they don't need to be fully outfitted. They need to be fairly substantially outfitted. To, to, to they discussion. get a crime at Target? I mean. <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions from the audience? Yeah, Lynn. Uh, actually, it's more of a statement. Um, I sat through these finance budget meetings since 2007. So that means I painfully have sat through them for over 13 years. And I certainly appreciate the position finance directors find themselves in when they turn these in. They're the ones that try to create soak out of a sow's purse, but the budget really belongs to the mayor of the city. And quite frankly, at this point, even though I fought to retain the strong mayor format for the city, over the past 12 years, I watched a mayor who refused to spend any money and took our departments down to dangerous levels while building a very large prudent reserve. And now over the past three years, I've watched a mayor who has spent freely and has actually hired our departments out perhaps beyond where they should be for a city our size. And I'm beginning to think the real problem we face is mayors without any real management experience and very little experience in cities of this size. And I think the only way, unfortunately, to solve the issue, and it's not gonna solve this budget, is to actually move to bringing in someone who has credentials in city management to run the city. That way, neither the mayor or council will be happy, but both will understand the balance that is required, along with the residents also. Article 8, Section 5 of our charter allows council with a five member vote to submit to the electors changes to the charter. And I really think the time has come for council to look at revising the charter to include a position for a city administrator to run the day to day activities of the city. That section should allow the mayor to appoint but require the approval of council for that appointment to become active. And I'd also stick in the minimum requirements for hire so we know that people who are being hired actually are qualified for what they are being asked to do. Mm -hmm. And it may have to go to a section of the administrative code for that. Mm -hmm. I know quite frankly, my suggestion might be interpreted as too costly or as an action against the mayor. However, the mayor already on his Facebook page quickly discussed being the only elected full-time official of the mayor of the city that is tasked with a lot of duties and he complained about how difficult that is. Certainly in view of all of the outside committees he is now on, that does take additional time. And I would think he'd embrace the idea of that. Lastly, you bring in an experienced city manager who understands right sizing. Probably they'd actually save whatever salary we pay to them within the first two years. I really don't think this is just about buying more capital equipment or how many police cars we need. 
think the question is the size of the department. Either under, under Mayor Rothschild, the city was a very safe city. And we had 28 police uh, officials. Right now, quite bluntly, we're up to 30. And on top of that, I realized the previous mayor took that down close to 21, which actually by ICMA standards per capita, we should be around 21. I'd argue really right sizing it hit us at 25. Our administrative costs are high. And part of it has been because we are just adding, adding people at top and you can't keep doing that. If we put all our money into personnel, we certainly are not gonna be able to function as a city. So I, you know, I've gotten to the point where it's like, it isn't the mayor's fault, but we elect politicians. We don't elect, elect people with the right kind of background to run cities. Thank you. If, if I could add to what Wynn Win is saying, uh, I've seen a lot of organizations in financial straits. And one pattern that emerges is uh, the impulse to cut as opposed to the impulse to get smarter. So there may be things that we could invest in that would actually lower our expenses. You need to think about setting priorities for the various projects we have in mind. Um, with that standard in mind. I think that might help. Thank you, Rick. I agree with Rick, it's true, but that takes somebody who actually understands how to do that. And I really don't think we have that expertise at the top. And it's no offense against you, Mayor Brennan, but you're not, you're not, your background is not in administration, your background is in law. And you're good at what you do there. Thank you, thank you. And 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 when you're, you, I, I don't want you to think that your point isn't well taken because, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, Shaker has a chief administrative officer, as you described. That's Jerry Chaikin. And and in, in Cleveland Heights, they're they're transitioning to a strong mayor of government, but they've retained that office, the one that you're proposing be created here. They will have a chief administrative officer, and. <clears throat> You know, I, I have had days, for instance, where where I have had on one hand, I'm negotiating with our economic development director with 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 developers for a project. And I'm alternating between that and phone calls where I have a service employee who's a disciplinary issue. And if I had a chief administrative officer who was handling that one thing, we could focus on the other thing. The mayor could be handled in projects and big picture things like they do it in Shaker, like they're going to do it in Cleveland Heights. We could be doing that here. I'm open to that discussion. Okay, so that's something that we can discuss in our strategic planning meetings. Um, okay, so right. We seem to have lost sound. Michelle, we can't hear you. Or at least I can't hear you. Can you hear can't me hear. now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's been my internet connection was unstable. Mm -hmm. I um, I appreciate what Brad and Steve said. Yes, we have cash. The problem is the way that we have been spending, and the way that the mayor wants to continue to spend is not sustainable. And and that's why when we're presented with a three million dollar deficit. Um, again, it's really, and again, I'm not taking in the 500,000 encumbrance, but it's about 1.8. We need to try to balance that out to a point. Again, not to zero, but within $500,000. Um, what I'm suggesting to recommend to council, and I would like um, the committee and council's um, approval and discussion to recommend um, this is based on all of the conversation with tonight was to, oh, the mayor, mayor, one thing you did not discuss was the possibility of the cell tower. No, I didn't because I'm trying not to discuss that publicly. Thank you very much. And I thought you knew that. 
you know, we're trying to negotiate with our unions yet. But here it is. It's kind of like the turnpike though. Once you sell it, it's gone. So, you know, that's something we've looked at. How much do we get per month? Uh, we get a we get about thirty thousand dollars a year right now uh, oh, yeah. on that. Yeah, it's a yearly payment. Okay, so what I have so far, and to get some discussion going on this, is to have one fire prevention vehicle um, taken out of the request, two police cars taken out, have do only 650,000 out of the 1.3 million in streets. Um, and then I am, I would like to discuss possibly what John said about with the shade trees skipping one year because we are anyways gonna be um, purchasing a truck and a leaf blower from there. Um, and then I believe we should pause on the administrative assistant in housing and not fill between a planner and a, and a full-time director in housing building. One of them is a new position and, and between the administrative assistant and that director position, that's 120,000 right there. And also on that fire prevention vehicle, the cost being 45,000, what, what made it 45,000 for a, administrative vehicle. This is yeah, I'd, I'd like to know that too. It, because because it, it needs to be able to report to scenes. Our fire prevention yeah. officer has to be a radio. To, 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 to bring his turnout gear uh, in his vehicle and, and be prepared to report directly to a, to, to a fire if appropriate from wherever they would be in that vehicle. You don't go back to the firehouse first and, and, and they don't wait for you with the ladder truck for you to come back. You got to have everything there with you in that vehicle and be then ready to report. That's why we're this looking at a vehicle we've never had before. So this would be a new vehicle to the fire fleet. No, we have we have two vehicles now that barely run. Which vehicles are those? Because we just bought a new SUV last two years ago. No, we're talking. There are there are two SUV vehicles. Uh, we went over them last year. Uh, we have put. I, I think we've put some money into them to try to keep them running. I don't see them move very much at this point. But one's pretty new though. There's a there's a newer yeah, vehicle. Yeah, that is not the fire prevention vehicle. That That is a command car. Okay, so exactly. So right. this vehicle is something that would be new to the fleet. No, there, there are currently two that. other SUVs that are in the fleet that these would replace. So the two vehicles that are in the fleet that are being replaced, what were those vehicles? What were they for? They, they're used by fire prevention. They're, they're used to go do inspections. They're used to go to meetings. There've been less of that, obviously, with Zoom and the pandemic. Um, and then uh, they, are, they are used for trainings. They are used for business. Some of it is administrative. But the thing is, is they also need to be able to report to the scene of a fire from wherever they are if, if called upon, which means that those vehicles are equipped with their turnout gear and, and other equipment in, in, in order to do that. But what equipment does that vehicle have that the Quint, which is the most superior vehicle piece of equipment we have in the city, doesn't have? Like their uniform, like the like what they wear. You know, when they go out into the community as a fire prevention officer, they're not dressed to fight a fire. So they're so the the the, the gear that they would wear to report to a scene to 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 help fight a fire is the gear that would be in that vehicle. So I we would need a forty-five thousand dollar vehicle for that for their gear, for their, for their uniform, for what they're gonna wear that a $20,000 vehicle wouldn't be able to do. That is a lot of it, yes. That's what I wanna look at a little further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, we could have Chief Perko or the fire prevention people in here to, to more fully explain the nuances of that. You know, it, it will probably be more credible coming from them. Okay. I think they've done that in great detail in the past already. They mm -hmm. have, actually, which is, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. But I'm sure they'd be happy to do it once more. It's been a year. Okay, so with that said, um, and so just to recap one more time, because we got just with the 
mm -hmm. prevention vehicle. We would only purchase one fire pre prevention vehicle. We'd only purchase two police cars. We'd only do one, we do half of the streets. And from housing and building, we would save hundred and around 120,000. And then we would lower the pruning between one and 200,000. That comes out to a $1.1 million savings, which is still at this point, $700,000 in the red. Hey. So it's still too high. And I'd like to point out that those are all cuts. There's nothing there that talks about how we would reduce future expenses. So I'd like to see something that uh, sounds creative. Well, two, well cr cr um, right. I mean, two of them are salaries. Um, there are no revenue streams that are additional that at this point we have no, our our housing that is going to be built is going to take me or what about 18 months um or which whichever one we're talking about i mean the residential taylor, the be taylor cedar tomorrow and um yeah and, and that's something that we uh, provide that's approved and goes forward you know we could have shovels on the ground this year okay i mean so i mean there you know we have about a year and a half out with with condos and and we hope University Square. I mean that's, you know, also years out at this point. So revenue streams are very limited. Mm -hmm. um, so this money that we're saving, what are we? What's the purpose of it? What are we doing with it? I mean, if, I mean, if we're saving it for a rainy day, it is raining. We have an economic downturn. We have a pandemic. We got people out here hurting. So what are we saving the money for exactly? It's not a matter of saving money. It's a matter of. No money we don't have. No, but we do have it. You know, as, as Brad rightly pointed out, you know, we're not going to go be in the red Mayor, if we do this. Mayor, we go forward with a $4 million um, beginning balance every year. You're eating into it every single year. Right. It's going to be gone. You can't keep eating into it. If we do this, if we do this budget, we'll be just under the four, just like we were two years ago. Just because you have it doesn't mean you have to spend have it. Have to spend it. Well, you know what? You know, we had this gentleman that came before us the other day, wanted to know why he's taxed so much. And you know what we didn't tell him? Because we sit on four or five million dollars a year and we're not spending it on them. You know, why are we collecting this money if we're not going to spend it on our residents? You know, our reserve with policy. Budget, with this budget, we are spending, million, and with we are this budget, well we are spending more than we're bringing in. Million. We are well <laughs> above the 2.1 four or five million, that is the city's reserve policy. Our budget is about 1.7 million above that. Okay. When you except for one th yes, except for one thing, mm -hmm. you can spend it down as much as you want. Mm -hmm. But right now you have talked about the fact that City Hall is falling apart. Mm -hmm. We have people who are all over. And even to begin to have that, you need that extra money. So you can spend it out now if you want to. If you do that, you will have nothing. And trust me, then you're gonna to have to come to the residents and say, hey, I wanna pass a bond so I can build a building. You will have nothing as base. Mm -hmm. So yes, you have a prudent reserve. The prudent reserve really should be close to three in this day and age, COVID taught us that. And COVID's, COVID is going to make changes, Michael, going forward. Mm -hmm. sure. Don't think don't think for a hot second that COVID isn't going to really come and slap us in the face later this year. Not with the UK strain, not with what's going on. Mm -hmm. So you need that extra cushion. Mm -hmm. You can spend and spend and spend. You can build up a safety department to a great height mm -hmm. and add personnel. The minute you add personnel, you are adding it into the future. Rick is right. None of this talks about how are you going to start the cuts in the future. When you came into office, every single person on council recognized the fact that this city had been starved for eight years and that you had to spend some of that extra cash. But my understanding, and I heard it in finance committee meetings during your first two years, very, very clearly. 
We could not keep going on like that. And we have never gotten to the point where you have said, okay, here's how we can tap it down. Here's how we can develop that out. I don't know if that is something that is comfortable for you to do. I don't know if it is easy for you to have to look at a chief and say, I'm not giving you that. I don't know. I know that's hard to do as a manager. Well, you know, and that is part of the problem. I'm going to attack your counting skills. You're saying that 3 million is, is, is an ideal reserve. We got over 5.1 million in carryover balance this year. And, and, and we're still going to be, even if we do this budget and we change not a thing, we're going to be well over $3 million again next year. So the thing is, is that... That's is, not, Michael, I know that. What I said to you is the prudent reserve for the city should be about three. Sure. But this city has future capital needs that are coming close. Mm -hmm. They are going to slap you in the face. And you can't blow the prudent reserve with the extra couple million, that's what you're going to need to begin to deal with what slaps you in the face and still hold on to a prudent reserve. Mm -hmm. That reserve is a thing for when everything else goes. Mm -hmm. We still have current capital needs. I mean, you're talking about the city hall we need to build and chances are we're going to have to pass a bond issue for that anyway. We're not going to be able to just bankroll that out of our regular budget. I don't know why anybody would think that. Thing is, is that we do have needs right now for police cars. We do have needs right now for fire vehicles. We do have needs right now for vehicles in the service department. We have schedules that we haven't been following. We have schedules we need to catch up on. And the thing is, is if we don't buy, if we don't buy four new police cars this year, we're going to need four new police cars next year. In fact, we need, last year we didn't buy four new police cars. We took two out of the fleet. And, and we really need six cars, but we asked for four. The thing is, is when we don't buy them, it just pushes it further down the road. Same thing with paving the streets. If we're not going to go and pave all the streets we need to pave, they don't magically get better on their own. They're still going to need paved next year. So That's the, all correct, right. except for one thing. You also have built out the police department to a very high number of individuals. You also can drive past the police department at any time of day or night and find four to six police cars sitting there. You mm -hmm. can find them sitting over at the, the detective bureau. Mm -hmm. We have never had two fire prevention officers in the entire history of the city. As a matter of fact, it got creamed under the previous mayor. Thank God, at least we got one back, but now suddenly we have two. But it is explained as, oh, one's a captain. Well, the captain should be part of the force. Do we have now, have, have we added a captain to our fire department? Those are the kinds of things, that those kinds of really hard questions that need be asked. Mm -hmm. Well, the budget I'm looking to support this year is substantially similar to the one that I proposed. I'm open to some minor adjustments, but this is the budget I'm expecting from this council. So uh, I would like to approve a budget, which is basically one like I've proposed. I'm open to some minor suggestions or even additions because we do have the money for that. And there are things that we ought to be doing. There, there aren't reasons to delay investment in certain things. And when it comes to you know, investing in this community, when it comes to the fact that people pay as much as they do, we shouldn't be sitting on this cash. One of the things that, that used to offend me as a resident under Susan Infeld was how she would crow about two and a half million dollar surplus when really she had no handle on the money. She had a finance office that didn't keep its books. She had no idea really what she was doing. She was paralyzed to actually spend money because she was terrified that, uh, of what she had or didn't have or didn't know. Thing is, is we do know what we have. And the council knows what it has in a way that it never knew under Infield because Infield wasn't transparent, whereas we are. We know what the money is here. We've got the people here who are managing the money. And there's a way that we can use this effectively to serve the people. The thing is, is that the role of local government is to deliver services at a reasonable cost to people. That's why we're here. And we need to exercise good judgment in order to do that. 
And we're not exercising good judgment when we're sitting here saying we just can't spend the money because what happens three years from now? The thing is, is we have real needs right now. We have real needs right now for police cars, for fire prevention vehicles, for in the, in the service department. We have real needs right now to actually pave streets. We got real needs right now where I, we got people that are coming to the city council saying, why do we have the highest property taxes in all the county? I, I turned it over to the council. I said, council, anybody want to say anything about it? Nobody had anything to say. I went ahead and said, you know, it is true. $10.25 of every $100 collected in property tax is what comes to the city and the rest of it goes to, to the the um, uh, to you know to the county and to the schools and, and so on and so forth. You know, Barbara rightly pointed out that that uh, property values are a little bit different and that uh, you know we got a commercial base. Actually, I pointed out the property values, but the commercial base, Barbara rightly pointed out. The thing is is that we have challenges here in the city. We know that, but we are prepared to take them head on. But the thing is, is that if we're saving money just for the sake of saying artificially that, that even though we took in more than a million last year than we actually spent, but this year somehow, you know, we ought not touch that, then, then we are not doing our constituents a favor. We are not serving them to the way that we ought. And the thing is, is that when they call and they ask, why don't we have this and why don't we have that? And, and I know we have the money, then the question is, is what do we have keeping the money for? What I told Susan Infeld over and over again is, is if you're, you know, instead of carrying a $2.5 million deficit or not deficit, $2.5 million surplus, you know, if, if, you know, if we have real needs in the city, then let's spend the money. And if we don't have real needs, then give it back to the taxpayers. But the fact is, is we have real needs and we're ignoring them. And we don't serve our constituents when we don't go ahead and, and, and spend the money that they've given us to serve them. That is an investment in the community. That is what people want at University Heights. They deserve better than what we're doing for them here. But you know, this, this, this budget is a budget which I believe is, is reasonable, is in fact conservative because it, is, it, it comes in well above what our city policies reserve uh, amount is and, and substantially meets some of the things that need to be done in this city that have not been done to date, weren't done in 2020 because we had to be cautious and we're able to do them now. So I'm looking forward to this council seeing that and serving our community in this respect and, and, and making the investments that, that, that people need, that they expect, that they deserve, that they've already paid for. I would say if we need all of these things right now, if we really, really, really need all of these things and we're gonna need five garbage trucks and six police cars, then maybe these aren't the top of the line vehicles. I mean, we used to buy used garbage trucks and we, for what, 60 to $80,000, the one that's for most 230,000. So maybe we don't do a brand new one. I mean, I, I would love to have a new one because it's gonna be in the long run more efficient for our city. But if we need it right now, I mean, perhaps we're not doing all new. Well, if we bought new ones when we bought the used ones, we wouldn't need five now. If you look at the schedule, you know, uh, we, we, we bought several used trucks, you know, s s starting in 2012, and they're used up and they're done. You know, if we bought new ones, we wouldn't be looking at garbage trucks for 18 years. So in, in terms of the garbage trucks, I mean, right now there's a new truck in there. One. Yeah. What? One. One yes, newer there's truck. There's a new yeah. truck in there right now. Yeah, I think and the replacement uh, projected replacement we, on that's 2036. We have um, within the next month, we'll know whether we're going to be what what our trash pickups going to look like. So I, I have no problem keeping that as a placeholder right now. And if we need to buy it, we'll 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 buy it right away. Four weeks isn't going to isn't going to uh, make a difference in terms of mm -hmm. uh, of that right now. But um, you know. Again, we know that we need facilities and we have entered into a strategic planning process that will take a good part of a year. We know that those facilities are gonna take um, studies, drawings, and we need that cash to pay for it. They are not cheap. It could be a million dollars alone just to pay for those, for those studies and those initial drawings before a bond even comes up. Easily. So, so I am still of, of the mind to, to reduce this budget by that 1.1 million that I just mentioned. It is still 
way higher than even my comfort level, but I, I believe that that this needs to be reduced still. And I'd like to hear what some of my colleagues- Well, hear me are. out. If you wanna reduce the budget for the city hall, you know, one of the things that we've done here is we've created a new fund for facilities replacement. Do you wanna take cut 1.1 million and move it over to that fund? You're, I'm not sure what you're saying because- There's a fund that we've had on the council agenda. Coming in for facilities replacement, which we presently we're funding $100,000 to in this budget. Would you like to take 1.1 million and move it over to that fund? Because that's what you say we're saving the money for. You, you're, you're confusing two different things because so. cash and revenue are different. Mm -hmm. you, what we have is I don't know, $4 million in our investments or whatever. You're saying to put a million dollars of our $4 million in there. That still doesn't negate the fact that mm -hmm. we are taking in less than what we're spending this year. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not actually, I'm, I'm asking you if that's what you would actually like to do. Because that would be if we had a $1.1 million surplus though, right. then the surplus money would go into the fund, but we don't have a surplus. We would, we're trying to net even. And we're not well, going to. And, what I'm trying to get, yeah, and John, what I'm trying to get to the bottom of is, is if, why are we saving the money? The reason it's been put to me is, is we're saving the money for facilities replacement. Okay. I don't well, think we're arguing about saving money. I think we're arguing about not spending the full amount. This is, this is way more complicated than what you're making this. When you have, I think it's extremely have $17 million of revenue coming in and you have $20 million of expenses coming in, it's not sustainable going forward. You can't keep spending it's going to, it's, it's not going to. Yeah, you're just looking at one year instead of looking at everything we have. The thing is, is if you're going to go ahead and say that we're cutting this money for the purpose of facilities replacement and we've created a facilities That's replacement. That's not the only reason. Among, reason. among other things. Well, not then what are the other things? I want not oversimplified. We've we just discussed it all. Why are we the money if not for them? What is it for? You've said it's for facilities replacement. I've said, okay, well then are you open to moving that money over to the facilities replacement fund? The answer seems to be no. So then what is the reason? I don't mind moving a million dollars to the facilities replacement fund and not spending it. It's a yeah. fund, it's cash. It's gonna sit- From our cash, not from our revenues and expenses right. here. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. So it's just really how you're coding it. I'm fine with that. It's what you're doing is you're taking our investments and you're moving it into a fund. It has nothing to do with our revenues and expenses coming in this year. Mm -hmm. They're two different things. Okay, well, you know, I asked. I have no so problem. For one thing, if no, you keep, and, and perhaps Dennis can answer my question for me. If I'm correct, Dennis, if we put it into a fund, it has to be spent for that fund. If it's kept in investments, it's a little bit more flexible in its use. And going forward, I would think you'd need that flexibility. Uh, it sounds like, and so that's one question. Am I correct on that? Um, not entirely. You're, I mean, there's a general uh, misunderstanding between fund balance and cash. Yeah. That's either in dollar bank or at fifth third in the investment portfolios backs up the fund balances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So at the beginning of the year, we have $9 million of fund balance. We should have $9 million between Dollar Bank and Fifth Third. That's why we reconcile at the beginning of every month. Mm -hmm. Thing, um, money from one fund to another does not impact the investments. It just impacts the alignment of the internal fund balances. Right. And is that a general fund fund that you're talking about for this facility or is it a special fund? That's a capital fund that's restricted. Um, any expenditures out of that fund would have to be approved by council. And it could be for any capital. It doesn't have to be for the building itself. I don't want to limit ourselves is what I'm saying. Right. Well, no, it is specifically limited to facilities improvements. That's why that's that that's where you lose the flexibility. If you put that million in there, I think when what you're saying is you can't get it back out. Right. And that's what I'm saying. What I and right now, wait a minute, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing here is is like a three-pronged debate. 
First of all, the mayor wants to spend, he wants his budget to stay as it is, which any mayor always does. Mm -hmm. That's that's nothing in, unusual. The council is clearly saying, and they have the power of the purse. Mm -hmm. That is what we, the residents, have given them, not the mayor. They have the right to say, no, we wish to make these cuts. They have the right to make those cuts in the budget and the administration must honor that. That is the way the city is structured. So that's what I'm hearing. There is a difference of opinion about this budget. As a part of his argument to support his budget, the mayor is making the statement that A, he finds it upsetting that there are prudent reserves and there are additional monies that are being uh, saved. Uh, Let me finish. You made that clear. I'm not lie about what I said. I will interrupt you when you mischaracterize. Okay, but you're saying you have just said as you hated it when the mayor said there were 2.8 million extra, you said you thought that money should go back to the residents. If, it, if there were, if they were, she wasn't going to spend it on us, then it ought to come back. All right. Prudence the reserves are sitting there and they are not being, quote, spent on us. They are just sitting there to be spent on the city. That mm -hmm. is the same thing with that additional funds that the city is currently holding. It's not going to be wasted. It's not going to be blasted. Mm -hmm. And the difference here is, do we spend it today in this year? Do we spend a big chunk this year? Or do we spend, wait and spend it as the strategic plan emerges? Mm -hmm. Where you might want to divert some of this, where you might have wished that you had a lower budget this year. And I want to piggyback that there's a fundamental difference between the prior administration touting a surplus in which money was not being spent or going back to the residents or not for anything else. It was a surplus, it wasn't a prudent reserve versus what we're saying today is we don't even have a surplus. We just have the prudent reserve. So there is, there is a difference in what that terminology is because the prior administration saying it was a surplus and that's where there was angst into why are we being taxed so high? Right, and there was no reserve policy under infill. We have a reserve policy now. We together have done that. It is superior to what infill was doing. So the thing is, is I asked, you know, if we're going to cut this money, what is it for? And the answer was, it's for the future, for the future facilities. And I said, if that's what it's for, then let's put it in the fund for that. Wynn is saying that that removes flexibility. I'm saying commit. We all agree that we need new facilities, if that's what we're cutting the money for, then put it there. Let's put, let's mean what we say and do that. You want to cut 1.1 million out of the budget and then put it into that fund? Now we're talking because then we can tell the people that's what we did with the money. But we still have a deficit at the end of the day. Yeah. Even after we cut a million, we still have a million dollar deficit and we're going to put a million that's not flexible. Mayor, we have a survey, that I could see. We don't want to tie our hands by what Dennis Vice said. Mayor. Yeah, Justin. I just, you know, one of the things that, that comes up consistently is, and I think the mayor, the mayor or, or, or uh, Councilman Blankfeld discussed this at, at the last council meeting, and it was regarding our revenue streams. It's something that comes up quite regularly in comparison to other cities. And so if you live in a city like Beechwood and you've made a fund as the mayor suggests, or you have an issue that comes up in future. You have a lot of, to use Rick's uh, you know, terminology, a lot of creative solutions that you can come up with to adjust where you're spending your revenue, how more revenue comes in. You know, and we don't have that here in University Heights. So it takes a conservative view to the future of not just, well, what are we gonna do when we need to build a new city hall? Well, what happens, what do we say to the citizens of future when, you know, a portion of our sewer needs to be replaced and we have, don't have the money to do it? Well, ha, we showed you back, we really meant what we said back in 2021, where we put that all into a fund that we can't spend now. And it's also beside the fact of we're not actually saving money that's coming in. We're just taking money that we already have and putting it into a different area. And I don't, I, I don't think that's the way to go. But one of the things that, that frustrates me about the way that we do things 
is that I, I think we, we avoid conversations about payroll and how the city is spending money on the people that are working for it. We complain about the way the housing department is structured, about, you know, Nino coming in and then Nino leaving. And then, you know, Zach is, is now coming up and, and in a position that looks like a director, but really isn't titled a director. We have too many police officers or not enough. And, and, and it's just very frustrating because then when these conversations come around, they're focused almost entirely around dump trucks and police cars without, I think, appropriately and, I, and 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 mayor brennan you know you you don't shy away from these issues i appreciate how how candidly you responded to win but i just think it, it avoids a real conversation about how the administration is structuring its workforce and what we are spending money on and 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 there are very likely justifications for the positions that we have and the money that we are spending but we don't ever say, Mayor, look, I think you might need to do without the communications director that you have. Um, I think that, you need, that you're overpaying somebody inside of the housing department. Um, and, and then we avoid having that conversation and either hearing the justification from the administration and agreeing or disagreeing with it, keeping it in the budget or, or cutting it out of the budget. And I know that that's a portion of what you said, Vice Mayor Weiss, but I just think with all of the conversations that I've had, um, you know, over the past year of being on council, we just never come back to the fact that there seems to be a, a general concern with council on the way that we're spending money on payroll, on the people that are working for us. And if we mean that, if we mean what we say, then we should we should ask for an accounting of what that is, ask for a justification of those roles, and either keep them in the budget or cut them from the budget. But I, I think one of the other things, just as an interpersonal kind of dynamics of the organization, is that we often get frustrated. Well, I didn't know that person was being hired, or I don't know how much that person is making. And then we get we, instead of saying to the mayor that and have either holding him to account or or taking responsibility for that frustration and cutting it ourselves. And, and we end up fighting with him over dump trucks and police cars. And so I just want to have wanted to bring that to the table as an area of, of further examination as we look at creative solutions to to um, readjusting how we do what we do um, as, as a potential area for savings. Yeah, thank you, Justin. I mean, the housing we have discussed, the housing and building. I mean, part of the reductions are to salaries there, but we have asked, I mean, Mayor, you know, we've asked about outsourcing, we asked about sharing resources, this has been going on for a year, I mean, we've never really gotten a clear answer on that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is outsourcing is going to cost us more money than doing it in house. I've talked to Safe Build. I, I, you know, they have a monopoly, they're basically it, they're very good at what they do. But you know, going with safe build is a little bit like going out to eat instead of cooking your own dinner. The thing is, is that over time, it's going to cost a lot of money. So if we think so, you know, I can tell you that that if we can call safe build, we could have them here tomorrow. Um, you know, we would be done with the bumpiness over trying to home cook our, our, our building and housing department and be prepared to spend a lot of money. You're not going to find it sustainable. What's how much is it? We're spending eight hundred thousand dollars right now. It's going to be more than that. I, I mean, I got a quote, I would have to get a revised quote, but when I saw the numbers, I said, council will never go for this. And sharing resources with, with inspectors and, and building departments. I know that other, I know that other communities do share the responsibilities of building in uh, building inspectors and that it is done not that they have to pay the other community for that person's time. They do it in a way that is basically like a mutual aid agreement. Mm -hmm. So while this building inspector, this building commissioner has these certain certifications and the other communities has the others and they're lacking, they cover for each other and it works mm -hmm. extremely well and it doesn't cost either community. And bring it to us, Mayor. You know, like I, I, I just think when we have it on the record, when we have the response, when council may or may not, you know, go for it. 
but at least we can stop bringing it up as a deficient. Well, the mayor never brought this back to us for outsourcing. Well, bring it. Let's talk about it. Let's see what the quote is. And then we can stop talking about not knowing what it is. You know, I mean, I, mean, I you know, it'll be like GT environmental on the survey. I mean, I could put it on the agenda and say, here, we got this. I don't really I don't know what you think. Uh, you know, I kind of think it's kind of too much. Well, and we can, vote it we down. I mean, I, I guess we could do that. That seems like a waste of time. I, I don't want to waste your time. I, I think like a different I approach. I think a different approach to that might be, for instance, bringing the survey, you know, responding to 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 me coming about that issue, and then bringing it to the service committee to have that discussion ahead of time. We can pull all the members of council and talk to them. So if, if the issue is bringing it, you know, if, if the manner in which we're communicating about these issues is to have it, hey, surprise, it's on the agenda this Friday um, for Monday's review, then then that's an issue. A separate issue, I think. But I, I in terms of bringing the this, this is about effective communication is never a waste of time. Yeah, effective communication you, is never a waste of time. Yeah, I don't want to bring you a quote on something that I don't recommend and don't think that you would do either. That's a waste of time. And I saw the safe bill quote and said, wow, that's a lot of money. You know, that's a fallback. If everything else fails, then yes, I will take that to council and say, look at how much money this is but it'll be really good. It'll be like eating filet mignon every night. We can have it. It'll be great. We can all eat it up and we'll pay for An it. An email to Vice Mayor Weiss. Vice Mayor Weiss, here's the quote. I think this is too much. Copy all of council. Look, it's $2 million. We're spending 800. I don't think this is reasonable. And, and that would be a communication. It's not bringing it to us for official action on the, on the, on the you know, agenda. It's just communicating about that data so that, here in this meeting, we don't have to bring up or no one's bringing up. Oh, remember that thing we asked you for? We don't we don't know what that is. And and, you know, bring as if it is a deficiency when we probably would all agree as reasonable people that it's it's not a reasonable amount of money to spend. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe it is or maybe it's not. But the thing is, is, is that it, it didn't look like a good route and I didn't pursue it further. And I didn't see a reason to develop it further to, 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 to forward on to everybody. And, you know, and I don't want to have a public discussion via email outside of the view of the public. That's, that's, that violates the Sunshine Law. So the thing I is- don't, I don't think it's a public discussion. I think it's submitting it to council for their review. That is that. Instead yeah. of scattershot things landing on the agenda when nobody has any idea where it came from or why mm -hmm. or- that's what happened under Mayor Infeld. Things were asked for and never shown to council and then suddenly appeared. There has to be a certain amount of transparency with council Maybe because they are the elected representatives of the residents, well, just as much as you are. And we could have these sorts of discussions out in the public where people can see them. But not if they had, had not even been able to see the document. You do not have. We used to do this in 2007. Mm -hmm. Although people kept saying there wasn't any transparency with Rothschild, there was a lot. But things happened. We'd have counsel the whole meetings. She would disclose what everything was. Everybody saw it. Everybody could talk about it. What needed to come out in a council meeting came out in a council meeting. If it was ridiculous, everybody said this is ridiculous and that ended it. But withholding it, what happens, Michael, is that everybody on council now wonders, why didn't he give it to me? If that is requested, if you have that, that is a public document. Any one of them can send you a public information request. If you are now putting Castle into that position, you have regressed us back to the last eight years. Well, that I think leading <coughs> a lot of things here, Wynn. But the thing is, is that you know, I do, I do, I do uh, appreciate the suggestion that maybe we should have more committee of the whole meetings to hash out these things so that we're not hashing them out in council meetings because that may be a more appropriate place to do that. You know, Cleveland Heights has a committee of the whole meeting every other week, you know, the weeks alternating the city council meeting. If that's something you wanna do, I'll be there. You wanna you want to take every Monday night all year long 
to do city council uh, and, and do and alternate between council meetings and community hall meetings, I'm open to that. You know, maybe we don't have to do it every other week. Maybe it's it, maybe it's once a month. But that may be a fine idea, and that may be a fine way to discuss some of these things. By the way, you know, our agenda uh, for this meeting was solely to discuss the budget, and we're going and we're into going all the things which which really rightly we ought not be doing when we've only got that one agenda item on the budget. Okay, well, Councilman Thanks, Gould, Councilman Gould mentioned just um, we got on this subject of the housing because of the of the salaries. Um, mm -hmm. That was one point of um, contention that we just, I mean, this housing department has just been in flux so much. Um, the other, the other question was salaries regarding the budget, and then we will wrap it up with a recommendation is, um, the communications department, which many, many of us, um, feel that there's a possibility that there could be a reduction there. Um, I wholly disagree. I mean, the communications has been essential throughout this, this, this pandemic. Um, you know, the communications department, you know, I've had to defend this before, the communications department has, has kept the residents updated with respect to the coronavirus newsletter. The, the communications department has, uh, you know, basically single-handedly takes care of the mosaic, uh, does the newsletter, uh, keeps, keeps the residents informed. It's something that we're very good at. Uh, it's something that, that, that the residents I know appreciate is, is how well uh, this city keeps the residents informed about matters of public interest. When in better times, we use that department to promote the, the city's activities. We haven't had as many activities, but instead we've had you know, crucial information about the ongoing crisis. And that is happening because we have a communications department. Uh, I find it to be absolutely essential and, and it should continue on here at the city. Okay. Are there any comments regarding the communications department? No, I, I would have to agree with what the mayor is saying. Now, maybe it's because I'm in the communications publishing business for most of my checkered career, but when you have been transparent and you're communicating information and then all of a sudden you stop and people are going to say, hey, we didn't hear about this or we didn't know the pool's going to open or, you know, this and that. Uh, I think, yeah, there's a, it's a cost. You know, I'm gonna open my big trap, I'm gonna be polite, but I'm going to say that when, and I'm not buddy-buddy with a mayor, I think we've met once in our lives, but when six of the seven previous council members voted or endorsed the opponent of the previous mayor. So you have replaced the previous mayor as six of the seven previous council members wanted. Okay, you've got what you want. In my view, rather than nitpick, he's hiring this guy, he's hiring that guy. If you don't like what he's doing, get him the hell out at the next election. But I do think it's wrong to be going over all of this the way it's being done by council members. I don't want them to get mad at me, but uh, again, six to the seven, we wanted a change. Well, you got what you wanted. So, you know, now you're, you know, judging everything that he's doing under very difficult circumstances. Frankly, he might get so fed up and say, call it a day, and maybe I wouldn't blame him. So that's my two cents on the matter. I'm supportive of going with what it is this year, and then a year from now, we'll see where we are and maybe adjustments have to be made. But by not going ahead with police, with not going ahead by fire, with sewer, this or that, you're making the chief executive officer's job even more difficult than it currently is. And I don't think that's something we should be doing. And you know, re respectfully, Brad, um, <laughs> you have to look at the bigger picture. And you have to look at what you're bringing in and what you're spending. Um, and nobody 
has ever suggested that we should gut safety forces. Um, we would never imperil the lives of our residents, that we would never let the city fall into such a state of disrepair that there would be safety concerns. Um, are there issues, serious issues with communication and transparency? Absolutely, and I think you've heard your elected officials state that. Um, with regard to how departments are staffed, um, the building department has been in flux, as, as Vice Mayor Weiss said, it has been in nothing but flux, um, and, and it has to be reined in and it has to be pinned down. Um, as far as communications, Brad, nobody is suggesting that we should not communicate with our neighbors. Nobody said that. Um, to you know, manage the Facebook page and maybe do the little magazine twice a year instead of four times a year. Um, there are you know salaries and benefits come into play. And and to Mr. Gould's point. Um, these are all of the bigger picture things that you have to take into consideration. And certainly nobody is looking to make anybody's job more difficult. However, without an effective give and take and respect, it becomes more difficult for everyone. Right, but as I understand what is being said that with the passage of this budget, we will still have at the end of the year, that 15%, 2.1 million approximately, cash reserve, which has been approved previously, right? Mrs. Weiss, I'm gonna let you take that one more time. Well, we'll have that and we'll have considerably more than Mr. Glazer. So that'd be more than the 15%, okay. Yes, yes, we'll have almost 4 million. Listen, the, the, the sentiment of, okay, first of all, I wanna preface by saying council's greatest wish is to work in tandem collaboratively with the mayor, period period. That's all we want. I think the council's appetite is way more conservative than the mayor's is and has a more long-term outlook on the financial security of the city. That is why we don't want to deficit spend to the extent that is proposed. And I think the, the, the reductions that are, are being proposed are, are palatable, reasonable. Are, are reasonable, are not at all affecting any city service. Um, I, and I, I think it's, it's way, the, the compromise is, is way less than, than what was originally thought of and intended by council. Um, and this will not affect safety. It will put off some streets for one year, but COVID wreaked havoc in general. And we still managed to get some streets done, by the way. Um, and, excuse me? What streets did we do last year? There was, I mean, there was not, there was county projects that were done. Right. Um, Laurelhurst was done. There was... Uh, there were there was something else done also. That was a, that was a water project. Okay. Or water. A sewer project. Yeah, that okay. was a water. That was a Cleveland well, that's water. That's my project. mistake. That's yeah. my mistake. Okay. Um, all I'm saying is there is hugely. We just our view is just it, it, it's more conservative in our outlook. That's all, and there is nothing on on this budget that is that is screaming, sacrificing anything, anything, any services for the city. So I would like to wrap up this meeting if there's no other discussion um, and um, make recommendation to council to reduce this budget by approximately $1.1 million. Mm -hmm. I will um, give over the information to the finance director. Um, if, is that recommendation approved? I agree. Agreed. Okay. John, I think you're on the finance committee too, correct? Yeah, um, are, you're making a recommendation to council for it to go to a vote or are we gonna, I, I mean, I, I still think we can cut more, but 
So I'm not ready to make a recommendation yet. Okay, where else do you feel that there can be adjustments? I, I still think we can need one more meeting. I mean, I'm not ready for, for full vote yet, but. I mean, what we can do is adjust this budget and then have another meeting in a week or so. I would be so comfortable. Everybody can review that. Are you more comfortable with that? Yes. Okay, so I will um, I will get a meeting together and give Dennis the, the numbers and then it will reconvene. I would like to see that. Is that again. acceptable to everybody? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you for attending. Um, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Stay thank safe. You. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.